Oh, it's funny because it's true. Oh, hi there. Nice of you to join me on this lovely Saturday afternoon whilst I'm at home in my casual clothes, enjoying a bit of light reading. If you don't know me, my name's Mr. Canarkery, also known as Mr. K, because apparently that's easier. And this is the first ever edition of Mr. K's Monkey Mass, so you are in for a treat today. So, if you've uh, tuned in by accident, then you might as well stay, because it's going to be amazing. And if you've tuned in on purpose, that probably means that you need to know how to use some of the basic buttons on a scientific calculator. So we're going to get straight to that. So if I've done this right, the buttons that we're going to look at today should appear on the screen now. Okay, let's begin. Okay, so I'm going to start with the basic buttons. So we're going to look at like um, x squared first of all, which you'll see sort of in the middle row. So that's simply just a square, something times something by itself. So if I did 5 and press the x squared button, it's a little 2 on the 5, and then hit equals. I get 25 and I squared that, simple as that. Next to that, on the right hand side of the x squared, you've got an x with a little box on it. So again there, if I put in uh, 3 and press the x with a box, that gives me the option of choosing whatever I want to, um, um, whatever power I want to use on this 3. So in this case I might do 3 to the power of 4, hit equals, and I get an answer of 81. And it's simple as that. There's also an x cube button if you want it, and you'll see that then it does exactly the same way. I'm um, using it in exactly the same way, so that's that. Ring, 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 ring. Ooh. Hi there. Right, next, you've got the square root button, which is next to the x squared button, it's the other side of it. Um, this is just so you can do the opposite in square root of numbers. So if I hit that button, and then I do square root of 25 equals 5. So that's pretty straightforward. So the square root button above it, if you look in yellow, it's got the cube root button. So this is to find um, a number that's a cube root or something. So if I, to find any yellow buttons, you do the shift button in the top left corner. So I do shift first, and I press the square root button, it brings up the cube root sign. You know it's that because it's got a little 3 on it. And then if I did something like cube root 27, that equals 3. And there you go, I found the cube root there. Um, another good button, which next to the square root button is the fraction button. So if I press that, looks like a um that's exactly how the button looks. It's got a square above the line and a square below the line. And then you simply just um put in the numbers you need in it. So if I wanted to do a half, put a one in, and you press down on the D-pad. So right, I said D-pad, hashtag down with the kids, put a two in there. Um if I wanted to do something next to that fraction, you can see the cursor is small by the two there. If I press right on the D-pad, it makes a big cursor and I can do Add, and I could add another fraction to it, so then I could do again uh, two thirds down there, three Hit equals, and I'll get the answer seven six. And if I want to change that into a decimal, there's a button that's like it's got S and a two way arrow between an S and a D on it. So if you press that button, it picks it to a decimal, and you keep pressing it, it goes back. In fact, it does that first, that's interesting. Uh, very nice. So there you go, that's another button. Why is it not turning up? Right, so um, combinations. So you might get a question with a fraction and a square root in. So if it's everything in the fraction square rooted, then you press the square root first. You get your box, then you press the fraction button, and you can see there the, the square root's over the whole fraction. So again, you could do it square root of whatever really, so you know, you might even have something like sine in there, sine 35. Make sure you close the bracket on that because it ultimately opens it when you press sine. Divided by 12, doesn't really matter. Hit equals. Get some crazy answer. Perfect. Now if you've got a, a fraction with the square root just on the number above or below, then what you want to do is do the fraction button first. Then you can do the square root button for the top number. So square root of 25. And down below you can do, you know, uh, just any normal number, 6. And again, there you go, you've got an answer, and you can flick through that with the S to D button. So that's that button. That's the fraction button. Beneath the fraction button, you'll see there's a little um, minus sign in between brackets. And that's actually the negative number sign. So you've got the minus where you've got add 
times divide, that's actually an operation, so that's minus and that's taken away something. But if you want to just put in the sign for a negative number, then you use the little negative with a minus. So, um, and you can see the difference. I'm pretty sure they come up with different sizes. So I did 12. This is take away, and then I press the negative number. You see it's a slightly smaller sign, negative 5. Of course, that's taken away negative, it's actually going to um, increase in size. So if I hit equals, that should give me 17, which it does. So that's a useful thing as well. Um, last couple of buttons I want to share, um, right at the bottom of the calculator there's a button that says times 10 to the power of x. Now for GCC purposes that, that's going to be used for standard form. So if you want to get something in standard form, say I had 5 times 10 to the power 7 in standard form. So I could put 5, then I press that times 10 to the x button and it gives me the little 10 and I can put in the, I can't remember what I power said now, let's say 8. Um, that. So that's going to give me 5 times 10 to the power of 8. If I hit equals on that actually works it out for me, which is quite useful. So, um, but that's standard form button. Other useful button at the bottom is a button that's got ANS on it, ANS, which is an answer button. And all that is, is it also, the calculator always automatically stores your last answer. So, if it's a really awkward decimal or something like that, um, so if I, let's, do, let's do cos of 57 or something like that, um, close bracket, equals, okay, so that's, some big number and say now I wanted to do 12 divided by that number rather than having to remember that I can just type in 12 divided by and then I hit the ands button and the calculator automatically stores that uses my last answer which was whatever it was and now it's the answer is 22.032 blah 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 that's now what the calculator we're using the answer so if I clear that and just hit answer equals see it's got that stored in there now so it will always store whatever the answer was after you've hit equals Again, useful for um, if you mid calculation because you shouldn't be rounding mid calculation. Calculator, really enjoyed our time together. Never had a problem. You've helped me sort them out. I know sometimes I've, I've pushed your buttons a bit, but um, you've always given me a second chance. And uh, wow, you're just such a good listener. last couple of things I want to show you then um, that aren't really buttons and more just um, functions of the calculator or useful things to spot on the calculator is you always want your calculator in D um, for degrees which is at the top of the screen um, in GCSE because sometimes it turns up as an R which is radian so if, if that happens you can sort that out quite easily because you can do shift and then press the mode button on the top right and it brings up all these and you'll see you've got three is um, deg which is degrees and that's what you want so you just press three and it'll bring up a D in the Top corner in the top of the screen, and that's that done. Lastly, then sometimes calculators do funny things and have like f of x equals, and whatever buttons you press, you can't clear it. If this happens, the easiest thing to do is actually just do a clear rule on everything, okay? And the, if you look at the number nine above it, it's got CLR, which stands for clear in yellow. So to do that again, so it's shift button and nine, um, and then it says clear one set up, two memory, three all. Well, it's always a safe bet to do freeze all and do that. Then it says reset all equals. It's for yes, so equals, reset all, and then you can just press any key, and your calculator will be good to go, it'll be ready to use. Right, well that's all from me and the calculator for now. I um, hope you've enjoyed it, uh, and I hope it's helped. So thanks very much for watching, tell all your friends, because I'm sure this is an amazing channel we all want to watch in your spare time, and I'll see you again in the future. Bye. Cool, go off air, brilliant. Calculator, you were amazing today. Seriously, you're like a natural on the screen, well done. <sighs> So, what are you doing later?